Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Welcome to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Inspirista, Mindset Mojo Mentor and best-selling publisher, Linda Joy. And, you know, I've always been drawn to energy. Part of my healing journey has been learning to listen to and honor, you know, my own energies and to heal a lot of the denseness that I felt throughout my life. Though back then, I never knew that there was a whole system that's within us that would make it so much easier. And with me today is author Lisa Erickson, who is an, also an energy worker. And she's joining me today to share this amazing accessible info on working with your chakras in your daily life. She's going to explain what the chakras are for people like me, who many years ago were like, what? And she's going to teach you ways to use it in your daily life to help you create more successful energetic boundaries, release limiting self-beliefs, and more. So Lisa's an energy worker specializing in women's energetics, sexual trauma healing, chakra manifestation, and kundalini awakening. She's the author of Chakra Empowerment for Women and the Art and Science of Meditation, both published by my friends at Llewellyn. She helps women maximize and balance their energy during key life transits, such as pregnancy, postpartum, perimenopause, and menopause including balancing the mother-child energy line. She also works with individuals to heal emotional wounds on an energy level from abuse and assault. Her private session work includes working with chakras for goal manifestation by identifying emotional and karmic blocks lodged in the chakras and working to clear them and align the chakras with future goals. Lisa, I got to tell you, I can't wait to dive into this topic. So welcome, my friend. Thank you, Linda. I am really happy to be here and speak with you about this. Well, you know, I first connected with you because I just loved your messaging. And then when I found out, uh, we actually connected about another topic, right? And then all of a sudden, I'm like, what? Chakra Mm -hmm. empowerment for women? I have to get you on the show. I have to get you in a spy magazine and the top 10 list because I just was so drawn to your message. Mm -hmm. And I believe all women need to know that within them, is what you call an energy technology, right? And I love that phrase. So let's start there. Like, what is your, um, how would you explain the chakras for those who are listening that haven't, maybe haven't even heard the term? Yeah. Well, chakras are essentially energy centers in our subtle body. And we have a subtle body or an energy body, just like we have a physical body. And I really view it as an intermediary layer between our physical body, our psyche, and our spirit. So when you're working with energy body tools, you can connect from there into your physical body to aid physical healing, or into your psychological self to aid emotional healing, or into your spirit to aid spiritual growth. It's really an access point into all those levels. But the chakras or energy centers are like the organs, like organs are in our physical body. They are the main parts or pieces of our energy body. They are intersections of all of these different energy channels that run through our body. And the main chakra systems place the main chakras really parallel with our spine from our root to our crown. They vary in number, but the most common mapping maps seven energy centers from our tailbone up to the crown of our head. And each one is tied to different physical organs and systems, different emotions and states of awareness, and different wounds or blocks that we may work to heal. So by focusing on them, we can bring healing to any of those levels. That's what, you know, when I first heard of the whole thing and started reading about energy and getting into it, it felt so empowering to know that 
I had the system within me that we all do, that we all do, it, which meant I had the power to um, work with it, that I wasn't a victim to, uh, I don't want to say that to, I'm trying to find the language, that I had the power to clear what was holding me back in my life. I guess that's the best way I can describe what I felt back then. Yeah. And I think what's really empowering about it for some people is you don't have to be able to figure things out in your mind, right? I am a fan of therapy and counseling, and many people need that at different points in their lives. But you can sometimes feel as if uh, just knowing how certain patterns developed based on past experiences doesn't help you change the triggers or the patterns that took root, right? So when you're working at the energetic level, it isn't about figuring it out in your mind. How did I get this way? How did I develop this fear or this pattern or whatever it is? It's really about going straight into the pattern itself as it's lodged as an energy in your body and rewriting it, loosening it, healing it, and bringing a new pattern in. And so that's really empowering. Well, one of the first chakras I became familiar with because I had a block was the throat chakra. Mm. I find that to be true with a lot of women. And I know that's a blanket question because mm -hmm. everyone's different. But I seem to, in, in my circle, have a lot of conversations with women and they're like, oh, I had a lot of healing to do. They're in the root. That's the two. But throat, finding their voice, speaking their truth. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on that? And that so many women seem to struggle with that. I think that's very true. And it is partially a product of, you know, where we are historically in relationship to women and their power, where we're at this point where women can speak up more, but there's longstanding historical patterns that may hold us back. And there's conditioning in our childhood around people pleasing, speaking to make others happy, speaking to reduce conflict or trying to stay hidden. And because I work with a lot of abuse survivors, in that case, it's all often about kind of repressing our voice in order to stay safe. There's a sense of, okay, I just need to stay very quiet and out of the way so I'm not a target. So, you know, there's all different ways that that pattern and there's levels to it. There's the collective level and there's our individual stories that can contribute to that. I'm very focused on this, the root and the second chakra because I like the second chakra to women's power in many ways. And I think the throat chakra, it's a conduit really for the energies of any of the chakras. So I often find someone, it'll be the throat chakra and one or two other chakras because they need to empower those other chakras and then learn to speak that energy through the throat. So it's kind of a combination. Well, that would be my story because I was really blocked on the first two. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I think because I didn't do the work, that's my own truth. It really manifested with the throat issues. You know what I mean? And that's and until I was forced to deal with it. And I do want to say something um, for all our listeners. We may have some triggering conversation today, but I want to say Lisa is a certified in mindfulness meditation, instruction, and trauma sensitivity. Mm -hmm. So in case some of our conversation turns to, to woman's trauma, and childhood trauma, I just want you to be aware um, so you can choose whether you're ready for that and to um, decide if you'd like to keep listening. Mm -hmm. So I, I really think um, that's such, so important for us to share as we, because I want to have a full conversation with you, but I also wanted to make sure I said that and I wanted to make sure I brought up your certification too, Lisa. Thank you, Linda, so much for saying that. That really is the essence of trauma sensitivity is giving people choice and giving them the information that they need to make a choice that honors them and keeps them feeling safe. So I really appreciate you doing that. Oh, you're welcome. And, you know, I'll, I share my story. I mean, I am, um, I no longer say victor survivor of um, childhood trauma. So mm -hmm. for me, having you share this work and, and, being mindful of the sensitivities of others because I remember where I was 30 years ago when I began the healing of that. Mm -hmm. So thank you again. So one of the things I wanted to talk about, and, and it's funny because I just had this conversation with a friend of mine that's a healer, is is there a difference between men and women's energy bodies? Mm -hmm. Do they process energy differently than we do? I know they all have the same chakras, right? But is it processed differently? 
I believe so, yes. And of course, now we're really redefining gender, right? We have individuals yeah. who, de who identify as non-binary, et cetera. So I feel there is a range. So when I talk about the feminine, feminine and masculine energy body, it's sort of two different models of how energy flows and people may place themselves in, in different areas on that spectrum. But I think what's one way to think about it is that our energy body, you know, as I talked about, it's this intermediary between our physical and spirit. So yes, at the spirit level, if you're using the chakras for spiritual growth, Kundalini practices, in many cases, those experiences of spirit, however you define it, is non-gendered, right? It's non-dual. But at the level that the chakras connect to our physical body, the energy medicine side of it, there are differences in flow and they're tied very much to the differences in our physical body, right? Each of the chakras is linked to glands, for example. So the second chakra is linked to the prostate in men and ovaries in women, right? It is linked to the womb and the fallopian tubes in women and the testes in men, right? So there is a big difference there in terms of energy flow. And for women in, in women's spiritual traditions across the ages, that womb center, that second chakra is really the seat of our power. And it is really where the Kundalini, the spiritual energy is pooled. And it is cyclical, just like our physical body has these more pronounced cycles and phases so does our energy body. So those are kind of the main differences between men and women. And then that has impact in terms of our boundaries, which men tend to be more anchored in the root chakra, which means uh, they have stronger energetic boundaries by default. Of course, there's a lot of variation in that, but the, the, the risk may be greater rigidity energetically. They may need more fluidity. Women may naturally have more fluidity, but that means they're often more absorbent and empathic and need more help with boundaries. That's a great generalization, but it's also one that is often very true. <laughs> so that, that's kind of the basics of the differences from my perspective. And we're going to take a quick break, break Lisa. And I love that how you explain that and you, you kept it so simple, but it was so clear. We're going to take a break and we come back. You know, again, this may be triggering conversation. I'd love to talk about how does trauma impact the, of any kind um, impact the energy body and chakras. So we'll be back in a moment. Um, again, I am with Lisa Erickson, energy worker, mindfulness meditation instructor, and um, certified in trauma sensitivity. You can learn more at chakraempowermentforwomen.com. We'll be right back. This is OTRFM part of the IOM Radio Network. Inspiration for a woman's soul. Aspire Magazine, inspiring and supporting women on the path of self-discovery. Claim your free digital subscription today, which includes access to thousands of dollars of personal development bonus gifts from Team Inspiration Partners. Claim your Aspire Magazine subscription today at subscribe to aspire.com. Hey America, we need to have a little talk. We've got more food than we know what to do with in this country, yet 17 million kids in America are struggling with hunger. Makes no sense. Luckily, the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks has volunteers gathering excess food and getting it to hungry kids. They're kind of like food angels. Hey, become a food angel yourself by supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Hi everyone, this is Shay Parker, the host of Best of the Best, which airs live right here on IOM Radio every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm super excited to bring you expert guest hosts, spiritual discussions, free psychic readings, and so much more. I can promise that you will not want to miss this one-of-a-kind, fun, yet touching, down-to-earth show. Join us every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific on OTRFM. This is Shay Parker, and I can't wait to see you there. 
This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspire Conversations. With me today is Lisa Erickson, author of Chakra Empowerment for Women. And we are talking not only about chakras, but about how trauma can affect our energy body, how the chakras work, how we can start working with our own energy body to help with stress management and, and using our chakras as a tool in our own lives. So Lisa, right before the break, I asked, you know, just so we can all get an idea of what happens to our energy body when we um, experience trauma in our life. And I do have a second question. Trauma could be anything, right? Serious car accident, um, is it ju- just physical trauma? It could be the death of a loved one. And is, would that all fall under trauma or which way do you mean? it? Yeah, trauma in general, I tend to stick with a kind of psychological definition. It's often diagnosed as like any event that our psyche can't seem to integrate in some way. Meaning we have things all the time happen that are disturbing, but if we can process it and work through it and integrate it, then it's sort of, done and it's in the past right trauma is something that is something gets stuck there's some part of us that can't move past it perhaps we're aware of that part perhaps we're not and it's repressed for many many years before we deal with it but there's something trapped uh in us around it so where that gets trapped emotionally or energetically will vary i think according to the type of trauma the cause of the trauma and and us individually right so we can talk I think there tend to be different wounds from emotional trauma versus physical trauma. Usually physical trauma includes emotional trauma. You know, emotional trauma, often it's more around the heart. Physical trauma of all types tends to really impact our relationship to our root because that root or first chakra is about our relationship to our body and our ability to feel safe in it. So that's often impacted by physical trauma. So I think there's different layers with different kinds of trauma. Well, I appreciate you clarifying that because I wanted to be um, clear in my questioning too. So, so you you mentioned a moment ago when we experience trauma, the psychological trauma, it gets caught in our energy center. Mm-hmm. So, so what does it do? Stops the flow of you know the natural flow of energy that allows us to process efficiently. Yeah, that would be one way of viewing it. So, for example, with physical trauma we may develop the way it reflects psychologically is it may be sort of a relationship to our body that is no longer trustworthy. We feel as if being in our body doesn't feel safe. So there's like a block to connecting with our root chakra. You know, this is a simplified way of talking about it, but there's a block to really connecting to that chakra, which then may disconnect us from some of the other energies of the root chakra grounding, the ability to feel routine, the ability to exercise or self-care for our body. Those are different ways our blocks or weakness in the root chakra might reflect. So that could be one aspect of, of physical trauma. Emotionally, sometimes we'll have parts of us stuck in a certain age when something occurs, especially with childhood trauma. That I don't necessarily think of as being located in a chakra It's more like an emotional pattern that develops where there's certain events or things that will cause us to react in a certain habitual way because there's a part of us caught in that six-year-old place. Uh, And then it's kind of about finding that six-year-old self, the emotional pattern in our energy body from that time in our life and bringing healing to it. That's That's a great way of describing it. And one of the things for me as I look back, you know, from my own healing journey, is when you said about the, I think you used the word, um, I'll use my word, disconnect from my own body. That's what it was for me for, you know, the first 30 years of my life before I remembered everything. It was, uh, I used to actually say this, and now I laugh and go, well, the sign was right there when the language you used, right? I used to go, I feel like my body's an appendage. Mm. I was all in my head because it felt safe. So I, it's like I am, now I see I, I am, pulled my energy out of my body. Mm-hmm. But isn't that a funny phrase to use, right? So then as I learned about my trauma and started, you know, working with energy and just diving deep, it's almost like 
if I use the chakras as you've been so beautifully describing everything, I see now that I slowly went down and pulled them all back together. Yeah. I never realized that until this conversation. Is that the goal of working with the chakras if you if if you have had trauma is to integrate them all so they can all communicate and, and flow together? Yes, I think that's very often where the work goes. And the root chakra is so important because it's the foundation of the house, right? If you don't have that solid foundation, it's hard for any of the others to really function as they should. So I really love the way you describe that. Now, I think everybody's journey unfolds a little bit differently. Some people, the heart work is, ends up being the most primary. For others, it's those lower chakras. But I think one thing that you brought up that is really, I find, prevalent is, you know, that we can be in our mind and that can be a sort of disassociation right? It's it not, was for me. It was yeah, for me. It's not drug addiction or video games or some of those things that we think of as explicitly dissociative. We can just have a relationship where we're just all either in energy, even our intuition. I've met people who are very psychic. That side of them is extremely developed, but the relationship to the body in those lower chakras is still problematic and that can lead to a lot of challenges. Well, what, what I'm thinking is, let's give some examples mm -hmm. of what could um, show up in our lives when our root chakra is out of balance, so that someone who's new to chakras go, I'm not, I don't get it. Um, share some of the things they might feel, notice, or patterns that might repeat. Yeah, there can be difficulty making money or keeping a job or keeping a routine of any type. There can be challenges taking care of the body. There can actually be body hatred. Or interestingly enough, it can go the other extreme where it seems as if someone is really taking care of their body. They exercise, they're always cleansing, fasting, et cetera. But it's coming almost from a place of self-punishment. It doesn't have a loving, caring feeling to it. So that can be another way of disconnecting from that, that root chakra. It can also reflect more as a kind of spaciness. Um, getting lost a lot, getting uh, feeling like you're just sort of disappearing into space, or maybe just when you feel, you know, at risk, feel triggered into anxiety, maybe the rest of the time you're grounded. But whenever something goes wrong, you go into a pattern of disconnecting, not being able to deal, feeling spaced out, or hiding away, um, binge eating, anything like that. So these are all different ways. Relationship to money, to work, to routine, and to body are all the main things. Well, uh, I can relate to those, especially in the <laughs> 20s and 30s. And, and, you know, the family would go, oh, my God, you're the queen of self-sabotage. Mm -hmm. And, but, you know, looking back, I go, wow, there was a hell of a wound there. Yeah. So, you know, we've talked about trauma and psychological trauma. Does um, and we're going to, again, we're going to have some, go into some triggering conversation. Does sexual trauma impact the body differently than the psychological trauma that we've been talking about? Yeah. Well, it certainly tends to incorporate the psychological and other kinds of physical trauma. But because that sec for women who experience sexual trauma, because that second chakra, our womb center, is so important to our overall flow of our energy body and because sexual trauma is impacting that sense of ourselves directly our sexual energy in our mind it's tied to that even though it's really about power it's not really about sex right it's about disempowerment but the way we often receive it is as a wound to that second chakra and all of the things tied to that which is our sense of our own sexual energy, our sensuality, our relationship to pleasure, to joy, uh, all and our fluidity, right? So often a woman's relationship to her body is changed forever after that. She may view it as almost an enemy on some level because it's the site of uh, the assault or abuse. Or she may become mired in self-blame and shame, which of course, on the cultural level, we all too often project at sexual abuse and trauma survivors. 
So there's a lot of different ways that it can reflect, but it often has to do with a woman's relationship then to her sexual energy. And when that is wounded in some way, it tends to impact our whole subtle body because that second chakra is so important to our overall energetic health. So where do you recommend that someone starts, right? If someone said, I'm, you know, I'm really taken in with this conversation, it's really resonating. Mm -hmm. What is the first step? What's the first step for a woman to yeah. really work with the chakras? Well, I usually do start with the root chakra first to really probe into that relationship to the body and work with that first before going to the sacral chakra. Now, sometimes even that, it really depends on where someone is in relationship to their trauma. Is it new? Is it years ago? Is it decades ago? Have they done other healing work around it? If it is really new, sometimes we're really working with the heart at first before we even begin to work with the lower chakras because we just need to bring in some processing at that initial emotional level, right? Then we'll go down and work with the root chakra and safety in the body for a while. And then we'll start working more on sexual energy and sensual energy. So it really depends where someone is in their healing process. In general, the root chakra is a great place to start. And that, that's where I start in my book and most of my courses, because it's that foundation of, you know, how do I feel in my body? So you also, I, I forgot that you actually, you have a course mm. on chakra empowerment for women. Yeah, I run it live twice a year. So right now it just started. So it's actually not open, but I'll do it again in the fall. And I do do one off workshops as well that are just on. So I do have one of those coming up uh, in April on energy work for sexual trauma. That's a three hour introduction for someone to get started. And can they find out about that at ChakraEmpowermentForWomen.com? Or is there another website they should go to is specific to that? No, ChakraEmpowermentForWomen.com does have all my upcoming workshops. Perfect. I just felt led that if someone is, yeah. you know, really feeling into this conversation today and, and wants to take the next step towards healing and working with the chakras, I wanted them to know how to connect with you to learn more. Yeah. So we're going to take a, another break. And when we come back, um, I, I want to talk about stress management because I think we can all use it right now. Um, now more than ever, actually, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we'll be back in a moment. I'm with Lisa Erickson, energy worker. She is also certified in mindfulness meditation instruction and trauma sensitivity. She's the author of Chakra Empowerment for Women. Go visit her at ChakraEmpowermentForWomen.com. We'll be right back. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. It's time to begin the adventure of a lifetime. By nurturing the most important relationship you will ever have, the relationship with yourself. Kelly Grimes, self-nurturing expert, speaker, and author of the bestseller, The Art of Self-Nurturing, a field guide to living with more peace, joy, and meaning, shares that a self-nurturing practice is not about being perfect or completing another thing on your to-do list, but rather nurturing a relationship with yourself. In the art of self-nurturing, you'll discover the inspiration, examples, reflective questions, and self-nurturing practices that will empower you to become the artist of your own life and see self-nurturing as an art form. Rather than living from obligation and overwhelm, you will learn to cultivate a life filled with self-compassion and self-love. Order your copy today at artofselfnurturingbook.com and receive the Self-Nurturing Starter Kit as a supportive gift. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. To read that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa Kay, and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, 
positive stories and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth Radio is conscious living for your soul every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Me, a cat moving in with a new human. It took a little getting used to. She has these weird games she likes to play, like this giant feather. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. It's almost like she thinks I enjoy it. But seeing how much fun she gets out of it, well, I guess it makes it all worth it. Humans. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Welcome back, my friends. I'm Linda Joy, your host. I am so excited that you've joined me today. And I'm gonna, we're going to continue the conversation with Lisa Erickson. So, Lisa, how can working with our energy body help with stress management, especially in these times? Yeah, it's been very triggering, obviously, for many people, for all of us worldwide, perhaps. Again, that root chakra, is, this is really the theme of our day today, our talk today. The root chakra is very important because it is about feeling safe in our body and when and anchoring and grounding. And when we feel anxious, our energy tends to rise upward. And then we each have different responses to stress. We may have a shutdown response. We may have an irritation response. uh, We may have an overwhelm response. We each have different responses. For all of them, our energy tends to rise up. We become sort of unanchored like a balloon floating away. And so imagining you're pulling that balloon down. You're focusing on the base of your body. And you're just breathing into that tailbone can be really helpful. The other thing I use a lot, though, is the heart, because that is our center point. It's the center of the chakra system. So just taking a moment to settle into the middle of your chest, maybe even putting one hand on top of the other there and breathing into that space and imagining that you're just receiving light and support from every direction into the heart can help settle your nervous system so you can get to that place where you can respond instead of react. So root and heart in the moment are my two go-tos for stress. I think longer term, we all sometimes have anxiety patterns that we can work on more on a longer term basis. Yeah, because when I'm, if anxiety comes up for me, I always feel it in the solar plexus. Mm. Um, And I can, I, I'm so aware now I, I can feel it immediately. And I know that in that moment, the choice is mine of whether to allow it to grow, right? Mm-hmm. Or to work with it and shift it. So for someone that gets, um, you know, feels that energy stuck or that little ball of anxiety there, is there a process or a meditation or anything that you guide them through? Yeah, I mean, general, basic breathing focused on any part of your body where you feel you're holding stress. So in your case, solar plexus, it can be shoulders, it can be jaw, like actual physical tension. Working with the elongated exhale, where you are perhaps doing inhale for a two count and an exhale for a four count. You know, we know this basic breathing has an immediate impact on our stress response in our body. And what you can do is combine that with focusing on where you feel the tension or stress in your body and imagining that with that elongated exhale, it's like a knot of energy that is untying and releasing. Then I think the longer term picture is when we know that when we feel anxious, this is where we feel it, getting into maybe some of the the history of that. Like what, what is, why do I feel it there? What is my response? Is it linked to that nearest chakra and some issues with that particular chakra or what is it linked to? And I love doing affirmations with my chakra work. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you use also? I use affirmations a lot. Thank you for mentioning that. Yeah. In addition to the breathing or visuals or instead of, For some people, affirmations are much better because you say the statement and try to feel it as you're focusing on the chakra. So on that root chakra, you'd be focusing on your tailbone and saying, I feel safe and present in my body right now. And in your heart, you might say something under stress like, 
I am supported and balanced, right? If you're feeling it in the solar plexus, that can be linked to the solar plexus or the navel chakra, whichever focal point someone is using. And you might say, I am centered. Just even that's that focus of your hand right there. I am centered in my power. I respond instead of reacting. So you can kind of custom tailor the affirmation that is, it's like, med, it's like medication. Meditation is medication. What do I need right now to counter what I'm feeling? Do I need to feel safe? Do I need to feel supported? Do I need to feel centered? I'm going to state I am feeling that. I'm going to state I'm feeling what I need to feel. And so I can bring that in. That's beautiful. One of my mantras, especially, you know, um, my following knows that um, about 13 months ago, my honey got two diagnoses within a week of each other of a pituitary tumor. And then they found a brain aneurysm when they were trying to see how big the tumor was. Mm. And so I w- was able to stay so grounded for that year. And a lot of people follow my post called hashtag seeing the blessings. Mm. And one of the things that came up, is someone said, how the heck? And we were in the middle of building our house. All right. And he's the contractor. So just add the layers and we're both business owners. And I said, well, I have a mantra. And they go, well, what is it? And I said, in this moment, all is well. Mm. Because in this moment, I'm sitting in the chair. I'm in this moment, he was by my side. And he's healthy. Like we, I don't know about everyone else, but we can go into projections, right? I know I could. And that's what takes our peace away. So for me, affirmations, and I love what you, I love the elongated breathing that you shared. Um, so I think that two together is going to be like a powerhouse. But that's that's been my mantra during difficult times to bring me back to now and not the story I'm creating in my own mind that is like, might never even happen. That's exactly right. Yeah, it's uh, everything is staying in that moment. That is really what all stress management is about. All stress management techniques are about bringing us back to, back to okay, right this second though, what's happening, right? <laughs> and yeah, other tools are really focusing in that moment on what is what is pleasurable? Like in that moment, I'm comfortable in my chair, feeling the love. And that's what's happening right this second. Be here now, right? And that um, soothes your whole energy body and physical body to do that. It brought me a lot of peace. And, and, and someone said, oh, so you just do that once a day? I go, oh, I didn't say that. I might do it 50 times an hour. But, <laughs> yeah. but at least I have a tool that keep bringing me back. Yeah. So you know, in your work, I noticed that you also use it, the chakras and working with the chakras for setting and attaining goals. So like, how do we tie that in with the chakras? Mm -hmm. You know, we talk a lot about manifesting these days and this idea that if we want to bring something about, we need to be able to feel as if it's already happened, right? If we're coming from a place of, I want this, then the, our energy is, I want, is, is about the want, is about the lack right? As opposed to this is really possible, I have this, right? And I think there's some problems with that approach, right? Because you can start blaming yourself if you can't feel that it's possible. And I don't think any of that is healthy. But what using your chakras are for manifesting is it is partially about, can I shift myself into a vibration as if this has already occurred? So I'm really in this place where it feels real, right? That's, That's part of the work. I think another part of the work is the chakras are a great model for goal attainment. It's often said that the upward path of the chakras from the root to the crown is the path of spiritual growth. And the downward path from crown to the root is the path of goal attainment or manifesting. You're moving from idea, from inspiration, all the way down to actual material reality, which is what our root chakra represents. So I use that model of crown to root with kind of questions and exercises to help someone go from inspiration through all the steps to making it a physical reality. So there's kind of those two different levels of working with the chakras and manifesting. How do I shift my vibration into feeling as if this has already happened and this is real? And also, how do I use the model of the chakras from crown to root? to go through all the steps of what it means to work towards a goal. You know, so as you're speaking, I'm just thinking of my life and thinking of back then, I was so creative 
But guess mm-hmm. what? I never finish things. Right. And so I, isn't it funny the things you think of? So as you're sharing, I'm like, oh, shoot. No wonder in my 20s and 30s, my mother would go, oh, my God, you're going to start something else. You never finish this other thing. So it became a pattern, right? But I know now it was a wound. Yeah. Um, and now I'm a master manifester. I envision it and it flows. But I even say to my clients, I receive, I intend uh, as it's going down, and I birth. Yep. The divine takes care of the results. My job is to follow inspiration, my intention, and the birthing process, which now, as you're speaking, is actually going through the chakras. But I never used the word chakras as I was describing it to clients. It was more of an energy. Is that what you're talking about? Is that flow of both? Yeah, absolutely. And you put that so well. And I think what happened, it, it sounds like as you healed your root chakra wounds, you became able to complete things, right? And birth things, that final step. So, and that's often what happens if people have a lot of ideas, that means, okay, those upper chakras, the vision is very, uh, vision with the third eye and inspiration is very well developed. But then it comes down to the throat chakra is, can we communicate it? The heart chakra is, can we get the help and support that we need and attract all the resources that we need and act around that? The navel chakra is the planning, the organization, and the actual execution of steps. The sacral is that creative piece, but it's also our ability to move through obstacles and adjust and adapt because things don't always, what we birth may not look exactly what, like what we originally envisioned, but the sacral is where we're able to stay true to the vision while changing the exact form that happens. So that's kind of the flow piece. And then you've got that root chakra, which is completion, actually bringing it into physical reality. So yeah, we can get blocked at any of those points and people tend to be blocked at one or the other. And when you look at it from that way, you can see where you need more help or what wounds you need to work on, you know? Oh, I'm loving this conversation. We're going to take a final break. When we come back, I have a question for you about this because, um, I, I really feel that because we hear so much about manifesting, as you said, but people don't realize that there's, there's this energy flow that you just described. So I'm excited to continue this conversation. I've got questions popping in. So um, we're going to take a, a final break. We'll be back in a moment. Please check out Lisa's website at chakraempowermentforwomen.com. We'll be right back. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Circle of Hearts Radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves. Join me, Grandmother Alaya, in the circle on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, as I share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Hi, you're listening to Inspired Conversations. With me today is Lisa Erickson, energy worker specializing in women's energetic, sexual trauma healing, chakra manifestation, and kundalini awakening. So what came up for me as you were sharing um, in the last segment is, like, um, I, I, you know, I can only go by my story. So when I was stuck all those years of not completing, that means that my lower chakras were blocked, right? Because there was no birth process. There was no releasing the vision to the world it would be whether I started an art project a new job you know one of those I never stuck with it and then now everything flows but I have this amazing 
um, spiritual, amazing woman who is just extraordinary at what she does. And we I've known each other, we've known each other for 10 years, and we've had this conversation. Is why aren't you birthing anything? She creates nonstop, mm. creates a, her seventh new website, and guess what? Has never gone public with any of them. Mm. So, you know, we have these deep conversations. She's one of my dearest friends. That's what we're talking about today, right? She, so the creativity is up in the upper, but there's no flow to the to the lower. Yeah, and that's Yes. I mean, I associate more the root chakra wound with not being able to complete things. So as you've described it to me, this is interesting because she actually does complete it. It sounds like she does the work. She completes it and they're beautiful and creates the programs, the new website. I get new branding and invest in all the money has never birthed any of those websites, even though her dearest friend, me, is a visibility catalyst and could put her out there. She goes, no, no, I'm done. And she walks away. It's almost like like the birthing of this vision, there's a fear there to release it. And I'm like, I yeah. keep seeing that feeling of it stuck in the birth canal. Yeah, I think there's that piece to it. And there's a heart piece, a heart and throat piece too, because those are so much about uh, our sense of our of other people's reactions to us. Like that heart is very key. In, it's that relationship chakra. And it's all about how is this going to be received? So there can be the birth piece that final step. And then there's, you know, fears held in the heart around what the reaction will be. And again, I don't know her, I'm projecting, but this is where I would be looking at it from my own perspective. You know, are there real blocks in the heart and throat around putting myself out there because I fear how it's going to be received. So I want to stay in this safe place of no one ever seeing it. And that's often heart and throat. And I do find that with a lot of women, I certainly went through that journey myself. And, and, uh, and the reason I share my story and hers anonymously, of course, is there's someone out there right now who's wondering why they have this pattern over and over again, right? And having this conversation with you today, I'm hoping they see like, well, maybe if I start working with my chakras and working with my energy, I can release the blocks. And one of the things for me, Lisa, is aside from all my media brands, I work with spiritual female heart-centered entrepreneurs with a message to share. And you would not believe the sacred visibility wounds that come up, right? It's like they're about to birth a book and like a, a week before the birth of the book, they're like, pull it back, Lynn, pull it back. I can't be seen. I can't believe I did this. You, and I'm sure you know, you birthed the book. You know the triggers. Yeah. And, but, and you know, Linda. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. No, so... I'm seeing in a lot of transformational leaders, healers, those here to serve with an important message. They're doing the work. Don't get me wrong. They're doing it. But I, I can see them energetically as, as sharing in a bigger way. Than, and I mean that from an energetic point of view. And I can see them pulling back their energy every time they're afraid, which means they can't reach the people that they no. want to reach, which is their, their, mess, their message and mission. So do you see, I can see the pattern in many people, not just one individual. Yep. What would you say to that? I see this over and over. I see it very pronouncedly with women. I don't know if, if all or most of yours are women. All, entrepreneurs. All, all women. Yeah. I see this so often and I really also view it, and this may be getting a little out there, but I, I want to speak, you know, for what I work. I feel one of the things that's going on right now on a larger level is a lot of karmic clearing around past persecution wounds. <laughs> oh, I believe that. I do believe okay. that. And this is a big part of my work. You know, we have, whether you believe in past lives or ancestral collections or, you know, connections, we have these wounds that are held around women being burned at the stake, being uh, persecuted in different ways for speaking out and especially around spiritual and energetic issues and healing issues, right? This is a big part of the history of the world. And I believe part of what's going on in addition to kind of the Me Too movement, a total healing and clearing and shadow surfacing around sex and violence is some of this around women's uh, ability to speak from a place of spirit, right? All the major religions, all of them, still to this day, women are in secondary positions. There's so much work still to do in terms of 
feminine power on the spiritual and healing planes. And so some of this is individual wounds and some of it is collective wounds and they kind of intersect. And there's a lot of clearing to do around that before someone can really go public, you know? I'm so glad that you're doing this work. And in, in this conversation isn't woo, it's, it's sacred truth, right? That's so, good. yeah. Um, yeah, I get so emotional. Um, about, well, the spy is 15 years old. So 14 years ago, Lisa, I was on a radio show and, and it was a live radio show. I was at the station and I only agreed to be on the radio show because I'm more of an introvert, especially back then, because mm -hmm. I knew the guest host. And I knew the host to be kind of out there. And I wasn't where I am now, right? So, you know, that, that woo thing you just talked about? Yeah. Oh, my God, that lady is too woo. I can't go on the show with her because I was uncomfortable. And, but I went an hour before the show. The co-host, my friend, called who had struck throat, said, I won't be there today. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> well, I believe in divine signs. But exactly. I was not gonna, this was a live show. I would never do that to a host. So I went. And here's the part of the story that relates to what you just shared we're talking she says okay we'll go to commercial break she turns to me and she says you were a scribe in Jesus's time and you were beheaded for sharing the spiritual word of the day mm. and hi we're back and I'm like shock on my face yep six months later I was having theta healing I was actually taking a course and the woman went in to do her thing and she said she was a dear friend and she said, you need to clear this. And I go, what are you talking about? She goes, do you know what Aspire Magazine is? And I said, it's my baby. She goes, it's the spiritual word of the day, but from other people, not Linda's spiritual words, right? And I said, what did you see? And she says, you were decapitated in another lifetime for blah, blah, blah. Same thing the woman said. She goes, and it's going to start to manifest in this lifetime. And I looked at her and I said, what does that mean? She goes, physical decapitation. It could be illness. And I said, I just got diagnosed with hypothyroid and I'm just recovering so from a C4, C5 serious car injury. Physical decapitation in this lifetime, Lisa. Wow. That, those two stories within six months to someone who wasn't as spiritually awake as I am now, right? Said, you have got to heal this so that you can be the person who's taken other people's words, everything I do, Lisa, 15 books I've published, 240 authors in those books. So think of it in the digital world, I'm the scribe recording the words of others. That's right. So what you said about past trauma, oh my God, it so resonates. And I think there's so, so I was hiding myself because of fear of being persecuted, right? Or decapitated or. Exactly. I think, I think it's everything you just said. All these amazing women and healers I see have wounds from the past, deep past, far back. And um, that's why I'm so on a mission to give them a platform to be, to be seen and heard. So I just want to share that story because it, it really ties in everything that we were talking about today is it's all within us. We have the power to change. We just have to go in and talk to our energy and, I'm going to send everyone again to your website before we close to chakraempowermentforwomen.com. Grab a copy of her book. Check out the programs and classes that um, Lisa has coming up. And um, Lisa, we have another two minutes. If any more wisdom or piece of information you want to share for our listeners today? Well, first, I just got chills up and down my back as you were speaking, and I really just want to honor you and the work that you're doing and having work to clear your own pain and block in that area, because now you're helping so many other women do that. And our work is really so parallel that I didn't know that's where I was going either when I started my energy healing work. But that is what that's the context within which I feel a lot of what I'm doing now when I work with. Uh, a lot of women, and especially those who are pursuing healing careers, for example, it's very much about clearing those past persecution blocks that are keeping them from stepping into the public eye in that way. So it's beautiful work. Uh, and I think really, wherever someone is starting from, that's what I love about the chakras. There's, there's an entrance point for everyone. So my main message would be not to be intimidated and just give it a try and you'll find what works for you because there's so many different modalities uh, and ways to work with your energy body. Mm, thank you, my friend. Thank you. 
And I want to invite everyone one more time. I want to leave you with that URL. Grab a pen, write it down. ChocolateEmpowermentForWomen.com. Um, go check out what Lisa is up to. There's so many, um, so much wisdom there, so many tools and resources. And as she shared, she has a lot of stuff coming up. So Lisa, I want to thank you. Thank you for being here. I have loved our conversation. It feels like the time flew by so quick. Oh, I agree. We could go on for two or three hours. I, I feel like I hope we can in the future. <laughs> we'll have to figure it out. Yes, I think it's such an important message. So thank you again. And everyone, until next time, choose love, choose joy, choose happiness, my friends. Blessings. Thanks for listening to Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy. Join our sacred space every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern and meet leading female visionaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. Inspired Conversations with Linda Joy is a soulful venue where guests share the obstacles they've overcome, along with wisdom and lessons learned on their personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic and soulful living.